everyone! Um, today I'm reviewing the first part of the six part review of The Six Wives of Henry VIII by Alison Weir. Um, today I'm reviewing the part of Catherine of Aragon, who was Henry VIII's first wife. Uh, for a little bit of background, and for those of you who don't know, she was Spanish. She's the daughter of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain, and if you don't know who they are, they're the ones who commissioned Christopher Columbus. So, pretty big deal in, in that day and age. She, her lineage was sought after in Europe. She was originally betrothed and married to Prince Arthur, which is King Henry's older brother, but he passed away within a year of their marriage. And she was thus, after a lot of turmoil, betrothed to Henry VIII who thought she was pretty and beautiful and really wanted to marry her, but she was ten years older than him, which does not end in her favor, to say the least. Um, chances are, if you're going to pick up this book, you already know a little bit about um, the Tudor era. I do know a lot about the Tudor era. I, I am a European historian. I do have a degree. Um, but... This is still good. Like, even though I know a lot about the era, I learned a lot in the part about Catherine of Aragon. And admittedly, I don't don't know as much about her as I do, say, Anne Boleyn. I know a lot about Anne Boleyn. But I did learn a lot. And, you know, there's she went through so many turmoils and is such a powerful woman. I have so much respect for her. I want to pick up a biography of just her because that's how much respect I got from just reading this. You know, she bore her burden and all the horrible things that happened to her in this era with just such humility and grace. And it did wane. It did have its downside. She did have pride. But she handled things so well. So well. Um, and so much respect for her after reading this. I, I did before, but now even more. More so, it's interesting. It's really interesting. Now, I know a lot of people kind of get into the Tudor history based on the Tudors. Fantastic TV show. Actually, probably one of the better portrayals of the era. Costuming a little off. Names, dates, those sort of things, a little off. But a really good stepping stone. And I love the series because, hello, gorgeous men, pretty dresses, beautiful actresses playing the women. But also because it brings a lot of interest to that era and people actually want to like learn about this stuff and then they're willing to listen to me talk about this stuff. Hey! <laughs> and so in for me. Um, but if, if you did watch the Tudors and it did make you want to pick up some books, you know, one, Eric Ives' biography on Anne Boleyn. Get it. Get it now. Buy it. Read it. Love it. Two, this one. Get this book. Because this gives you a good picture of all the wives. And I'll tell you, you're going to be reading this and you're going to be like, wow, they actually used that quote in the series. So that's really great. Um, it does come accompanied with some photos. It doesn't say, like, say figure like 1-1 one, one or 2-1 for this. But these are the, co the photos that accompany the Catherine of Aragon. Um, spread. Oh no. I bought my book used. It's falling apart. That's sad. But. So you do have young Catherine, older Catherine. She wasn't really this old. Like, I mean, in our standard, she's like 30. That's not old. But she's a lot older than King Henry. And it really shows in this. Uh, this is her mother, and this is her father. So I really liked that it did have, you know, I, I'm a big fan of biographies with pictures because sometimes you just want to look at it, and it helps you visualize the people more. I think it's great. Um, the parts about Catherine are really well written. I'm really glad they go beyond her reign as queen, um, that they start with her childhood, even not a lot of it, but like bits and pieces, it really explains a lot about how she was. There are turmoils that you don't know she went through. Um, she was basically sick and depressed for like her first six years in England. Um, 
and she was broke. They didn't give her any money. She seriously, like, couldn't even pay her household. And it's a testament to her character because her household stuck around, even though they weren't getting paid. And I, I mean, that alone speaks a lot of this woman. Um, it's really well written about her. Um, it does paint her in all the lights that she should be painted. Um, Alison Weir is known for doing some other, like, Anne Boleyn work. There's nothing that slanders Catherine of Aragon as you start getting into the Anne Boleyn era. There's nothing in it that's like, oh, this horrible woman, like, just wouldn't relent and let the king marry Anne Boleyn, like some other biographies do, or some other TV shows or movies. Um, it was really true to probably how things went. Um, it, it is known that Catherine of Aragon didn't see Anne Boleyn as a threat, and so she really didn't behave outwardly negative. Like, that wasn't really her concern in, in the entire annulment thing. She really didn't think Anne Boleyn was going to be anything. Um, so she didn't behave poorly towards Anne Boleyn. She wasn't a horrible person. Anne Boleyn actually, I mean, it's known by the end she disliked her because she was, like, you know, blocking Anne Boleyn's happiness. But even Anne loved serving the queen and loved her. Um, so it really does paint her in this light of just being a sight to behold. Um, it, it, a lot it references her being her mother's daughter. Um, and Queen Isabella is known for being Queen Isabella, like commissioning Christopher Columbus and being a woman that is way out of her time. And Catherine of Aragon was like that. I mean. She was regent for a while. She, while she was regent, the Scottish, like the Scots attacked and she won. And little things like that to just like, it doesn't portray her as just this sad old queen that got disposed of in favor of a pretty new mistress. It paints her in the light that she was an incredible woman with the horrible misfortune of being 10 years older than her husband having a husband who really just liked the ladies and being unable to give him a son, which there are probably many reasons for it. There's nothing we can prove now, but a huge issue with it is the fact that she was 10 years older than Henry. She went through menopause when he was just hitting his prime. And had he married somebody his own age, he would have had 10 extra years of, of trying to have a son. Um, so, but it really does, it, you feel for her, you grow with her, you enter England with her, and you go through the turmoils that she's going through. That's how well written this is. This is interesting, okay? Reading history sucks. I'm a historian, I'm allowed to say it. Reading history is horrible. This is really interesting, and it really, it's really well written about Catherine American. So, I'm very much, I'm just now getting into the Anne Boleyn parts. Really liking it. I've already cried. Not gonna lie. I've read like a hundred pages of it at work today. Don't tell. It's my secret. Um, <laughs> probably shouldn't be reading at work, but you know. Um, I can't put it down. That's how good it is. Um, but if Anne Boleyn's part and if the other wives are half as good as Catherine's, I'm gonna love this book. I already know it. My only downfall is I do wish Catherine's part was longer. She was married to the king for 18 years, and she was in England for years before that, betrothed to Prince Arthur. So there really should have been a lot more to write about her. But, you know, especially because Anne Boleyn's section is long. But my theory with the Anne Boleyn section is she kind of bleeds into Catherine's part, and then Jane Seymour kind of bleeds into Anne Boleyn's part, and so there's like a fuzzy line there. So Anne Boleyn's is a lot longer, whereas everyone else at least has a cut and dry beginning or ending. Anne Boleyn kind of like, sort of in the first and third wives stories. Um, so I do wish it was a little longer, but it was enough to whet my appetite. I am going to get another Catherine of Aragon biography, so be looking for that. Um, I've been rambling for almost 10 minutes now. If you're still with me, awesome. I love you. You're great. I'll try not to ramble so much in the future. I'm not good at this. Yeah. Anyway. 
Six Wives of Henry VIII by Alison Weir, Part 1. Ooh, fantastic. All right, I'll see you guys for Anne Boleyn. Bye.